So I was speaking to a student about this problem and they wanted to create a representative volume element, but not traditionally as a cubic or a cuboidal design of the RVE. But in this instance, they want to create a cylindrical RVE. And they weren't sure how to do this. And I started thinking about it and I felt that, okay, there is merit here to make a video about this. And that's the essence of this video, to show you how to make this sort of representative volume element for a metal matrix composite. And clearly the challenge is here is how do you then create the random distribution of the particles within the RVE. And if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, then sit back and relax as we go into this video. So my name is Dr. Michael Okereke. I'm the host of this YouTube channel, which is called CM Videos, and I'm a university lecturer and associate professor within a university in the UK. And I make videos on this channel just to kind of introduce you to the ideas of computational modeling on a wide variety of subjects. And I work most of the time with Abacus as a finite element modeling platform. And this is what I want to do with this video. I want to show you how you can use Abacus to create this RVE for a particulate composite. But instead of a cubical arrangement, we're looking at a cylindrical arrangement. And to do this, there are probably three steps that you need to go through in creating this RVE. The first step is clearly how to create the domain and distribute the particles within that domain. And this will involve a strategy that you're called a Monte Carlo approach, where you randomly place particles within the RVE in a quite repetitive random manner. And then after that, you then create, let's say maybe a, you know, a square arrangement of that domain, whatever arrangement you want. And then finally, the third step is where you trim everything down into the dimension of the cubic of the cylindrical RV. And that's sort of what we are going to show to do this. So let's look at the first step, which is how you actually randomly create this in this principle called the Monte Carlo approach. There are different videos I've made on this channel of the Monte Carlo approach, please do look for them to sort of understand the theory involved. And if you want to see how you can do this manually, this video will be a useful video where I demonstrated how you can do a manual distribution of particles within the RV. But we're not going to do that in this instance. We're going to use a software that I've written again, which is available for you to retrieve from the description section of this video. And this is a code called Gen Particle 3D. And I'm going to illustrate to you how it works and how we can first get the randomly distributed particles within the domain. All right, so when you get into the MATLAB environment where this software exists, so what you'll first find is that within the current working directory, wherever the working directory you have is this software, which I've called Gen Particle 3D. Normally it will come with the main executable file, which is a p-coded file. And the second one is an optional computational options file, which sort of instructs the code of what exactly it wants to do. So currently it runs within MATLAB. In future, it should become an independent software. So just watch this space if you're interested in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this as a text. And when I open it as a text, you can see what it tells me of what this code has the potential of doing. The first one here is a model material type I want to create. So in this case, I want to create a particular composite. In this case, you know, a typical composite. There's also potential of it creating voids. There's also potential of it creating micro capsules, self-healing concrete, you know, synthetic foam, any of those sort of materials that have, you know, voided microstructure within them, you know. So this is what it has the potential to do. In this instance, we're interested in the zero, which is a particular composite. And these are the dimensions that we're going to work with. So because I know that I'm more interested in a material that is quite long, so I'm going to leave the height to be 120 because I'm trying to create a cylindrical um, RV. So the height will be 120. However, the width and the length, I'm going to probably reduce it to 50 by 50. And because of this dimension, let's make the particle to have a dimension of 12, whatever that is. So we'll make a particle that have that dimension. And we only want one single particle in this instance. If we're interested in having multiple particle types, all we need to do is specify different diameters of particles and we're fine. But in this instance, we're looking at a monophasic system. The volume fraction of the particular system we're looking at is 20%. And the particle type I'm going to use here is a sphere, but it has the potential of creating spheroids and ellipsoids. And the particle color that we're going to use is six. So that means the default MATLAB particle and um, plotting shape effect. So this is the smallest distance between the two closest particles. It's just to allow it to be able to create as many particles as possible without intersecting between the particles. So the other thing that we could also get here is a particulate phase. This is just for you to have some kind of hard-coded material properties. So our particulate system here is made of a silicon carbide and the metric system is aluminum 
there could be an interface, but in this instance, we are not allowing for interface. So these are the properties of the modulus for the particle, the Poisson ratio for the particle, the Young modulus for the matrix in this case, aluminium, and the Poisson ratio. We are simply treating it as elastic in this instance. Once we create this model and we go on to write to the next stage, then we can begin to modify and change its properties. But for this in first instance, we want to create everything as elastic properties. We can leave all these other bits. The only thing I will leave out here for now is the trim percentage. I'm going to allow it to do a zero trimming. So this is for it to create the RV exactly the way it is without trimming any of the edges. And I will illustrate that when we get into, into the video. So that's sort of what we want. And then the next thing we can do here is to run this code. So if we run it, so what it will do is instantly it will create the particulate system. So this is a, a representative volume in a, in a cuboidal shape form with overall height of 120. And then it's got width and dimension of 50 by 50. And you can see the particles distributed within this domain. They are monophasic particles. So that means the dimensions are all the same. And of course, the particles are all 12 microns in diameter. And we then need to convert the system into an abacus model. And from the abacus model, we create the representative volume element of the cylindrical particulate composite that we're interested in. So the, the essence of this color basically tells you the positions are long. So these ones are quite low. The ones red are quite high up. It doesn't really do anything. So if we go back to the code, what you will notice here is that they created a folder which tells us what the length, the dimension, width, and the height. So if we open that folder, and open that folder then what you will see here is that under the abacus simulation we can tell it to open outside matlab so this becomes a python script that is created and that python script is what is going to be our window to get this model from matlab into abacus so and it would have some of the basic information that you will see so we're going to leave this here and then we're just going to run the model so the next stage is getting that python script into abacus so that we can create this cuboidal representative volume element of this before we then trim it down to a cylindrical arrangement. Here we are in Abacus. So all we need to do is to run the script. So I'll do file run script and then I need to put the link where the code exists. So this is where the Python script that we are working with. So if I open that, so what it will do now is it will begin to take the Python script that Gen Particle 3D created, import it into Abacus like what we are seeing right away and right away you can see it's created the domain with the particles distributed and if you study it very well you can see okay fine everything here looks very much like what we showed with the particle representation in MATLAB so the Python script has done an excellent job of creating this domain but it's not like the cylindrical system that we want and so the next challenge here is how do we actually get the cylindrical system that we want. The other thing I want to also do quite very well here is that I want to make sure that we have some particles at the top and particles at the bottom. Because currently this representation has everything locked within this uh, cuboidal RV. So I need to be able to trim it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the full particle. So there will be two models, the full particle and the match particles. We are not going to work with this. We're going to work with the full particles. So I'm going to trim first. So if I select here and then I'll click here, I don't want it to recover that. So this is what we have. So what we can then do is just to trim the system up a bit so that we can reveal what with what we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and probably say we'll start somewhere around here. You know, so and then we'll probably maybe stop somewhere around here as well. So this is the first the system we want to keep and then we can create a bigger one on top and extrude cut through the system it shows us okay this is fine and then so right away you can see what we have here there's some particles showing at the top and some particles showing at the bottom so if we then go ahead and say okay i want you to show me this in terms of surfaces it can show you clearly that there are particles at the top and the bottom and it looks excellently well so then the next thing is we want to then create the cylindrical rv the cylindrical represented element so we'll do the same thing here we we'll click on that and click on any of the surface click on that edge and right away you can see what we have so we've got a structure here so all i need to do is i'll start from here and say okay how far away do i want so let's probably make it maybe a radius of 20 micron and zero so that becomes the nice radius it's all locked in within the system nicely and then we can have a big block on the outside to make sure that when we extrude cut the regions around here will be the regions will extrude cut so if i click done 
and then and so what we see here is as it says want to extrude cut through that system in that direction and then right away we can click OK. So it does a nice job of extrude cutting through the system. And right away you can find a lovely cylindrical representative volume element, just like we wanted. So we can go back and to, to material and then you see, you can see clearly which particles. The part in green is the aluminium and the part in white is the matrix. So if we, so we can click on this here to sh just give us a little picture of what's going on inside. So we can basically set some transparencies. So if we set some transparencies, we can have a bit of a look and see what's going on inside. It looks beautiful. It looks as expected. So we have our Sunrika composite excellently the way it should be. What I will always want to do at the end of this is to try and mesh. So just to make sure that the model can work. So it's recommending to our lab, allow that. And then we click back on that, go to the end and we select a trihedrons, they are usually quite good for meshing. And then once you mesh the domain, if it's able to mesh the domain, then you're in business, you've got an excellent model. And yes, right away, we're in business, we've got an excellent model, it can do a fantastic job. And that's how we can create our cylindrical representative volume element for a particular composite. If you're interested in how this represent volume element will behave under compressive loading, then this is a video that I want you to look at. Thank you for interest in this video and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye.